it's Jeff's little engine service. Today we have a Troy built TB220 159cc OHV. That we need to replace the starter pull rope on. Keep in mind folks this procedure is exactly the same for Kohler engines and Honda engines as well. There are some common problems you may encounter uh, when trying to do this and I'll show you guys how to take care of it. So these are 10 millimeter and these two came off nice and easy. However, when I went to take this one off, um, it just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and, and I can't get this off. So I'll show you how to deal with that. Basically what you're going to need to do is remove the whole cover. So you want to make sure you have this as loose as it can be because there's a stud down in there that's spinning. And basically when it's loose enough, you should be able to pull the whole thing off like this. Uh, keep in mind, this um, goes right there and can come unplugged when you take this off, so make sure that that connection is still there. Their studs remained in place, but this one pulled out, and it's also the stud that mounts the coil here. Um, so I'll show you how to get that. I'll show you how to get this acorn off. And what you want to get is a pair of vice grips. Uh, some vice grips that have some good uh, sharp teeth. As you can see, my vice grips are pretty much worn out. Thank goodness my buddies at Grip Tools sent me uh, these. I'm pretty stoked to open this because look at those teeth. Uh, we're going to be able to get a good grip on this stud and pull it out. Grip Tools. Tools that mean business. Man, look at these things. They're pretty sweet. The copper uh, nut. All right, anyways, I think we're going to be able to get a good grip on this stud. You don't want to grip it at the threads, of course, but uh, you can get it up in there. There we go. And there's our pesky stud. You know, it looks like if you have a long. Um, 10 millimeter you can hook on to this and not have to use the channel locks okay so now we need to mount the stud um, back into the proper place we want to make sure our coil gap remains at about 12.012 don't forget this tab make sure you put it back in the right way of course And I was real careful not to move the coil, um, but it may have been moved with everything getting jostled around. So I want to make sure and check that coil gap measurement. You know, we're still feeling pretty good there. Maybe tighten it up a little bit. And you don't want to over tighten this bolt for sure because I've seen more than one broken off. Okay, double check that gap. Yeah, it still feels pretty good. A little snug, maybe. I think that'll work. I don't know what the torque spec is. Just don't over tighten it because it'll just break. And then you'll be in a world of hurt. All right. I think we're good there. And the tank goes back on. And now we can take this part off and get in there and replace the rope. So what you want to check here is just to make sure that it rewinds and snaps back, uh, which it does. You also want to make sure that these tabs come out like that. See how that works. I usually put a little bit of lubricant in there when I'm when I'm in here just because. So you can see it still winds up, but we do need to get the string out of there. 
Yeah, sometimes this can be kind of tricky. Um, if you look down in here, you'll be able to see the string. I use a tool like this just to get in there and try and pull that out. Yeah, it looks like that's the part of the string that's broken. There we go. All right, now we should be able to pull this whole rope out. And let's go ahead and just stick this in there so it doesn't unwind. Looks like I'll have to maybe cut that rope. Nope. Just pull it through. There we go. I'm going to take this out and let it rewind. And I'm going to use the hole as a marker to this hole and I'm going to wind it seven times. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put this back in, get the rope and handle, which you can buy the rope and handle here um, at most hardware stores. Uh, it's usually about seven or eight feet of rope and what you do is you're going to have to thread the needle you're going to have to thread it through this hole and then thread it through this hole so you can tie the knot um, sometimes you can put a little stiff wire on the end here to help guide you through but I usually have pretty good luck since I know what I'm doing now so I'll show you Yeah, I think I'm going to have to use the wire trick. So you can just get yourself a piece of wire like this. And you just want to poke the wire. Be careful. Poke the wire into the rope. And, and you can guide it through. Right up through that hole is where you want to go. There we go. Right. I'm going to use my new grip pliers. Grab a hold of this, pull it through, and tie a knot. Get rid of the wire. All right. Go ahead and tie a knot here. And you want to leave about that much. All right, I think we're ready to let it wind up. And it comes all the way in, so that's pretty much perfect. If it's not, if it's not tight enough, just wind it one more time. Alright, get these acorn nuts back on, make sure everything is seated properly. And there you go folks, that's how you do it.